I've definitely got corona, man. <clears throat> yeah, well, I just started the video. Actually. Jiu -jitsu, man. I, I just started the video actually, so um, that's <laughs> literally how this has just started. <laughs> You just told oh, really? me you got coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, I think I've got corona, yeah. No, but um, seriously, what kind of symptom do you have? I mean, aching. Like, my bones ache. Not just, like, a muscle ache. Like, yeah. actual, like, there's, like, shooting pain in your arms. Cough. Chest. Doesn't feel like it's caving in, but it's mm -hmm. a bit tight just, like, here. And the headaches, today's been the best day for the headaches, but the last three days, headaches have just been the worst. Headache. Well, I don't really get headaches. So for me to have a headache, I can't take it. I want to smash my head in just to end it. It does so, sound like you have quite a few of the symptoms of a flu, but I guess uh, like quite a lot of people, if you haven't got a chance to get tested, then you'll never know, right? Well, the temperature is the one I don't have. Yeah. The fever. That's, that's the one that I haven't had. The other night, I woke up sweating, and I was like, oh, my God, I've got the fever, I've got the fever. But it was only because the room was hot. That's the only reason why. So that's the only one I haven't got. And I'm not going to get tested. I'm just not going to leave the house for two weeks. And everyone in my household ain't going to leave the house for two weeks. Yeah, that's pretty good discipline. But when did it start? So you're going to do two weeks from when it started or not? Nah, because why, why if it, kind of everyone starts getting it at different times? Then we can do. Well, this is the thing. But it's, if no one gets any symptoms yeah. in my household, then I think we'll do it two weeks from when I started, which was Tuesday. No, bloody hell. I just heard like a quiet bit of coughing downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no but it ain't fairness. just my household, then. <laughs> no, but in all fairness, she's been coughing the past week, but showing no other symptoms. So mm. I think we're all right as well. But we've been taking it um, pretty, pretty safe, staying away from people from family and stuff for the past week let's probably give it another sweet probably give it another yeah week. i just heard it again <laughs> yeah you may give it another week after that the problem is <laughs> maybe another no week. one knows what to do man yeah, yeah no one knows because we're hearing so many things that different people get different symptoms or symptoms show up worse in some people than other people if you're young or fit you might get no symptoms so it's like it kind of sounds like, kind of sound like they're making up as they go along. <laughs> yeah, well, they probably are. They don't know what's, what's going on, really. Funny thing is, it sounds a lot like stuttering. <laughs> no one really knows what's going on, but <laughs> yeah, everyone's got no, an opinion. <laughs> yeah. And no one's got an answer. Apart some people might have a severe stutter. Some people might have a mild stutter. Some, some people might show it. Some people might not show it. Yeah, coronavirus... Uh, Coronavirus is purely psychological, man. <laughs> I wish it was, but it's killing us. It's killing us in terms of the economy, killing the elderly, the vulnerable. It's, it's not a joke, man. And people are still out as if it's normal as well. I was out in town and I still see people in the pubs and stuff like that. And people in, um, like in Nando still. I was like, Okay. Yeah. Still getting strong. Yeah. yeah. They still want that peri peri chicken, man. Yeah. <laughs> worth, worth the risk. But this actually um, brings me on to kind of I guess first first question: What's been the impact on on um, the changing environment to yourself, to your um, speech practice, working life? What's been happening? But to myself and my speech <laughs> practice, it's, it's had a massive effect, really. Because, especially since I've been ill since Tuesday, my speech has, has got quite a bit worse. Just to, on Tuesday and Wednesday especially, I try and keep a regular breathing pattern when I speak. 
But every time I was trying to take a breath, I was coughing. So I wasn't even able to keep Mm -hmm. a regular breathing pattern. And I just got to the point where you're taking the time to try and be strict for yourself. Just get on with what you can. Whatever happens, happens. And as I'm beginning to get a bit better and my cough isn't happening every time I breathe now, now I'm starting to be more strict. But you know when your speech ain't great and you're trying to get those small wins and you're thinking, Mm. let me just do that. Let me just say that sentence. Let me just get that word in this sentence. You can't do it because whenever you go to do it, you're like, (coughs) as soon as you're about to say it. So, so, yeah, it's it's, uh, taking me off track, but... I'm not too bothered about that because you can get yourself back on track quite easily, quite quickly mm. when everything goes, like when all your symptoms go. But in terms of work, we're working from home now. I don't like the isolation. I don't like not being in the office because I like talking to everyone that works in the office. I like making conversation. I like working on my speech in the work environment. Everyone it's just emailing now. So working from home seems to mean that nobody mm. makes any phone calls no more either. Do you guys do, so do you guys do any zoom calls like this or Skype calls, WebEx, that kind of stuff? We haven't yet, but as of Monday, we are planning to implement that, especially amongst the team. Yeah. We started doing kind of like a, every two days do, uh, day call in the morning just a good way to start the day to see how everyone's doing and then uh, crack on and then we have a open chat there yeah where we it's just put questions yeah stick some memes in there as well all good bands yeah yeah we've implemented a whatsapp chat but yeah again was it dead? Things should just be full of memes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Everyone's just sending oh, memes all day. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of productive when I want to talk. I'm the only one that stutters in the company, yeah. so I'm the only one that seeks that speaking opportunity. Yeah. But as of Monday, we will try and get a few uh, a few voice conference calls in. Um, oh. Yeah, but I think it's going to be slow. Yeah. yeah, very important. What's been slow, sorry? Been slow. Oh, sorry, man. The, the business as yeah. a whole. We, um, yeah. we operate in the luxury retail field. Obviously, Selfridges is closed. The majority of Bond Street is closed. The majority of the West End is closed. Um, That's crazy. Westfield we work with. Absolutely Westfield, crazy. yeah, it's crazy. Westfield's the only one that's still open, but a lot of the stores are closed. Mm-hmm. But the guest services... Uh, support that we offer they're still there but yeah you know it, it just it is what it is we've just got to try and ride it out and hopefully everyone can stay safe and loved ones are protected as best we can protect them and hopefully before we know it everything can go back to the way it was the problem is we don't know how long this is going to last for um, because it could be weeks it could be months or how long do you think yeah. it will last for? I think we'll have a... I think we'll be past the worst probably in six months. Six months? Yeah, past the worst. But but by past the worst, I mean you've got a good percentage of the population have got the virus and come through it. So they've built up the immunity and we've kind of isolated the older and vulnerable people and and done our best (laughs) to minimize the losses there because in the end the problem is it it, it isn't necessarily them who would be spreading it because they're more likely to be stationary Mm. it's everyone else who who has the immunity to pull through it but needs to be disciplined and keep themselves themselves <coughs> mm. in this how do you feel about 
how do you feel about what the UK's approach to it has been so far? It's been a bit confusing. It hasn't been clear at times. So you've seen some schools take it upon themselves to to put measures in. Different companies have been working from home at different times. Football even just even even they waited until Arteta got it, and then they were like, yeah. "Hang on a minute, this is pretty serious." Yeah. And then Callum Hudson Odoi got it. Yeah, exactly. And isn't necessarily their fault because f- football's been postponed, man. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. happen. That that doesn't happen. But if they don't get clear instructions from the government, because in the end, if it's a bit confusing, then people will just have to take it into their own hands to do what's best for their people, their communities. And um, yeah, that, that's what's happened. So yeah, they've said, I know there's going to be a shutdown of these things, but to be honest, quite a lot of the lockdown has already happened. Mm. People are already at home. Yeah. Do you think the football season will end? Like, do you think they will be able to finish it? Or are they doing everything they can so that Liverpool don't win the league? <laughs> that that would be hilarious, wouldn't it? But oh, you, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. The thing is, there's quite a lot of problems with football if they don't get the games done by the 30th of, of June. So, yeah. A, if the leagues don't do it, but if the government have not told them to to stop and if the leagues are like no we're gonna like keep everyone safe and be sensible Premier League can actually be sued by the TV companies so that's the best thing yeah yeah because they promised them to to put these games on and the Premier League they they don't fulfill that promise then they're actually breaching contracts with the TV company. Second thing is you have players who would be out of contract at the end of the season, which is technically after June 30th. So what do you do with these? Uh, yeah. Do you open up a yeah. transfer window? Yeah. Still got game. Gonna... Then um, the other thing is players' insurance. So uh, when clubs buy players, they take up insurance on their players, but mm. the terms are done by their seasonal calendar. So do you risk playing your best player if, he, if your insurance on that player has expired? Yeah, it's true. And there's yeah, all these, these things, there's things that we don't think of about. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. And there's all these yeah, I mean, um, different things that are affected by well, what's happening out there, affecting different sports, different industries. Yeah, I was going to say that from a fan's point of view, you just think that the league starts and everyone puts their football kit back on and they've been training the whole time. They've probably got gyms in their houses, the players, so they're keeping themselves fit. What um, to your season ticket? As- Welcome to your season ticket. No, I, do you get a refund on your games? I don't have a season ticket. No, just just oh, ask you hypothetically. Had one. Yeah, yeah. I think the I think they'd be reinstated for when the season started again. Or I'm sure if the season was void, then I'd imagine you would get a refund on that portion of the season. Maybe I don't know. <clears throat> or credit for the next season. Quite mm. a few clubs can't afford that. Yeah. How how many clubs actually operate in debit? Or yeah, as in every, everyone's pretty much in debt, right? But there's a promise that the bank knows that these clubs will constantly be selling this many seats, getting this much revenue from ticket sales, shirt sales, all this kind of stuff. Even pre season is Big business as well. T 
teams will won't get their preseason yeah. and Champions League money. <coughs> the Champions League clubs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, what's going to happen with the Champions League now? <coughs> One of the things they were thinking about doing is finish off this round of games. So once you do that, you get to the quarterfinals. Then you do every quarter final in a neutral venue. So each team will play each other once. But okay. once you get to the semi final, you do like a, a like a weekend type thing in the same city or country. So a bit like the Emirates Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they both play Friday and both play Sunday. So you do semi-finals on Friday, final on Sunday, in the same city and venue. So then you're, then if that place has been cleared for coronavirus, then, and they do the same thing with the Europa League as well. Do that. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to do that. Um, That, I can't see them being able to do that. <clears throat> but the league games are the priority because um, if you think about it, cup games are like your additional thing, right, in the season. But yeah, the, the domestic like the the foundation. Important. Yeah, it's the foundation mm. of any season. Yeah. And, and what? So in the Premier League, we got about 10 games left. Yeah. Hey, 10 game weeks, nine game yeah. weeks. So what? Yeah. What? So, so they play maybe he Wednesday Saturday for about four or five weeks. Finish mm. off. Yeah. They're gonna come back so unfit, and then they can play two games a week for a month and a half. It's gonna be hilarious. Yeah. And then you have everyone saying, "Oh, but they get a hundred grand a week. They should be able to do it." But it's not easy when you haven't played for that long. Yeah, it's mad. They're going to be off the ball, man. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who do you think will be affected the most? Which players? Lukaku, I'm thinking of. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he must have borne so much weight. <laughs> Lots of people. Um, who's the Watford guy? Dini. Troy yeah. Dini, yeah. He likes to <clears throat> fluctuate in weight, isn't it? Sometimes yeah. he comes back and he's a bit bulky. Then he leans up sometimes. Look at Rooney as well, maybe. Yeah, Rooney's, uh, he's the balloon a bit in pre-season. But I guess it's good yeah. for, for Kane and Son. They yeah. get to come back. Yeah, well, if the season continues <laughs> yeah. and they're fit, then it gives us quite a good chance <laughs> in competing. For yeah, yeah. More, maybe. So, it could be good for Spurs. <laughs> Some of the other things they were discussing was what do you do with the Ballon d'Or and all that kind of stuff, and because you've got yeah. this massive gap, and yeah, it's um, I don't know. I would just spin a coin between Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi again. <clears throat> And that, um, I don't think it is that straightforward because Ronaldo came fourth last time. I know, but regardless of that, everybody knows who the two best players in the world are, even now. I don't think it's that straightforward right now. It's not Van Dyke anymore, but that's for sure. Who, who would you put in the mix? <coughs> As in for the best player in the world at the moment. Yeah, like, apart from... I mean, who who would you think deserves it more than Cristiano Ronaldo? At the moment, I, I can yeah. think of quite a few players. Yeah? You, I could be wrong on this, this one. Um, first person would... Imane, even Haaland... Salah's been off for about 
a year now. No, no, he's not. He does pop up player. every now and then. <clears throat> yeah. Other players are Mbappe. He's still killing in the French League and the Champions League as well now. They yeah, got through true. Dortmund the other day. Jao Felix. No. That, that, that kid. I want to give it to him. <clears throat> that kid is wicked. No, he's good. He's good, but <coughs> I don't know. I, I just feel until Ronaldo and Messi retire, they're still putting up crazy numbers. No, that's true. <coughs> but, you know, I could be wrong. I mean, let's see what happens. But yeah, the Football League definitely needs to finish because what about the the teams that are going to get relegated and the ones from league, the ones from the championship that want to get promoted. What do you do with them? If if the if the league doesn't finish, what do you do? <coughs> One thing I read that um, I don't think will happen, but would be mad, is if Premier League. Mm. Everyone stays put. Every other league, they promote up the top two. The automatic promotion. So now you've got... What, 20, then there'll be 22 teams? In the Premier League, and then you scrap the League Cup for one season. And then you relegate five of them for the next season. <coughs> yeah. How does that sound? That'd be no, a bad thing. Dead, <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy. Crazy. It's mad that this virus has changed everything. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's mad. Like in 2020, something like this can bring the world to its knees, isn't it? Almost a standstill. <clears throat> yeah. I've got a question for you. Yeah. How does, as in, has there been any impact to the charity or? Will this type of thing, if it does happen again in the future, will it have an impact on the charity? It has impacted the charity in terms of we've cancelled our social <coughs> events and the meetups. Yeah, they're massive. Uh, our yeah. support groups that we were running every other Thursday, they're now not happening. But it has geared us more towards the Zoom calls and the conference calls. We're trying to keep people as active as we can. We know it's difficult that when you're trying to work on your speech and you're told to self-isolate, it's pretty much the worst thing that can that you can be told. It's pretty counterintuitive when you're trying to get yeah. people out of the house and out of their comfort zone. And the uh, yeah. government tells you to go back in. So, uh, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> yeah. And the annoying thing is, is that the meetups were actually proving to be really good. It was getting people out, playing the game of table tennis. Dude, they were fun. They were fun. I was yeah, smashing your pool. <laughs> smashing someone else at table tennis. <laughs> Wicked, man. And it's good because... Such There's a no laugh. pressure on no one. Such a laugh, yeah. There's no yeah. pressure, yeah. There's no, it's Such not technical. Laugh. We're not worried about um, <laughs> what that person's practicing or that person's practicing uh, or what technique he uses and they use. It's just about people that start meeting up, trying to lift, lift each other, having a good time. <clears throat> and to have that taken away from people, it's a sad thing. Like, it's a sad thing, but... The best part of the meetups was um, seeing people come for the first time, look a bit a bit nervous like a new kid at school and straight away just having a good time, chatting, opening up, having a laugh and just it's yeah. been really, really cool. And um, <clears throat> it's pretty good. Got a few people attend from different programs, different courses. And it's good to kind of hear how other things are done, and it's really good information sharing and people cool. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Very nice. One minute while I clear my throat for um, this isn't due to any 
illnesses or viruses or anything. Yeah. Just, it's got a dry throat on minute. <coughs> so okay, I'm back. It's still showing. Yeah, but that, was the, that was the whole aim of the social meetups, right? The whole aim of it was... To be social. Usually, yeah. yeah, usually as stutterers, we would avoid that new group or that new event where there'd be other people that we've never met before. And this was an opportunity to allow people to be what, yeah what they wanted to be in in a safe environment and everyone can mingle, everyone can chat, everyone can be free, everyone can play table tennis, snooker, pool, whatever it is, you know, have a drink. You know, so it was it was really it was really good. But we're definitely gonna pick up pick up where we left off. Yeah, without a doubt. When everything gets back. I do remember the first time I ever went to um, a stuttering meetup session. This was years ago. It was organised by one of my um, speech therapists through the NHS. I must have been 17 or 18 and it was in her office. And you, you walk in, you see a few other people. Every, everyone's sitting with, in their chairs in a circle. It was so weird, man. It was just yeah. so. See that? <coughs> it was that so, circle thing's quite intimidating, man. Man, it's, it's not intimidating. It was just really um, unnecessarily, unnecessarily formal. They yeah. all had the, um, the best interest in mind, but you had a kind of speech therapist and her assistant on the outside with like a little notepad and clipboard, and they expected us to kind of open up and chat, and it just wasn't happening, man. <laughs> This one happened because yeah. it, 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 it just felt really manufactured. And then I think a few months later, I bumped into one of the, the girls from there at, um, I think, Riley's, the snooker club, the pool club in Corinth. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and then, then we recognized each other. We started talking. We, were, we both realized at that time that it was just way too weird and formal and stuff. And we actually had a good chat. And thinking about now, this support group that we do, it kind of mimics the second interaction I had with that person because the first yeah. was just just like, what's going on? Yeah. The second one was more <clears throat> people come in, someone says hi, just say, yeah, just drop your bag and jacket over there. Come, let's pay some board, you and drink. And do, and do what you do and stuff. And there will be different people talking, like one-to-one -one conversation just by the side. And it's just all like um, very natural as opposed to forced and yeah. contrived and planned. But yeah, proper yeah. love it. Yeah, I like the way that it panned out because the way it panned out was how it was <clears throat> intended. Good. Yeah, and I think a big part of that was actually us. <laughs> As in, no, but we, we we aren't just a bunch of colleagues, are we? We're we're actually mates. Yeah, and people can see that, and we give that same love to other people, and yeah. and it and it it's um a bit more than just a community that we're trying to like, build is more of like um like a family or a tribe or something like that. just it's something a bit more natural than just yeah. being part of an organization <clears throat> yeah i totally agree i totally agree there'll be people that come in that want to work on their speech there'll be people in there that are happy with where their speech is at mm -hmm. people there that might not want to work on their speech and they're happy with that as well. Yeah. So it's just nice that all different people with different attitudes towards their speech can all just come together and meet each other and be mates and have chats and share their experiences and just mix with other people that experience the same thing as you with no pressure of having to implement anything, having to do Definitely. any type of any type of exercises, implement any type of technique. They can just speak how they want, be how they want, act how they want. And yeah, that no, was really good. It was nice. So I'm really looking forward to getting back at that. 
We've got a question, another one. What would you think would be the benefits of of um, a facility for for people now who are self isolating or or if they've been told to stay at home and can't go and, and interact with people and, and attend support groups? Um, and sorry, Roman, I'm I'm hearing something else in the background. Yo, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, 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 I think he's. Yeah, so yeah, that that's what I'm doing. Cool, cool. So, um, <clears throat> what do you think would be the benefits of an online facility for for people who start to communicate with each other um, through the web during this time of self isolation? No, that would be massive really good. for people. <clears throat> yeah, that would be massive for people just to have for people to get an opportunity to practice speaking mm -hmm. well, when we go into self-isolation now like I'm zooming at the moment a lot of other people are doing there's not a lot of opportunity to work on speaking regardless of the technique or anything just practicing speaking even if it is spontaneous fluency just getting in the rhythm of speaking more and more and more um, <coughs> to have that taken away from you can set you back and I think having a platform where people can just log in whenever they want and chances are someone will be on that other end of the video chat where two people that stutter can talk and share experiences or encouragement or just have a chat just to meet new people just to ask them about themselves just to find out what their name, where they come from, if they have family, what they do for a living, just to keep yourself practicing speaking through this time with a person that you might not have ever met before. It's not a direct comfort zone. It's not like talking to your wife or your girlfriend or your mum or your dad or your brother or your sister. It's a small win for that individual getting on a video call and talking with someone else or a group of people and just having that social interaction still, even though you are isolated in your own home. I just think it will be massive for people to continue on that role rather than it coming to a halt and we result to writing in a Facebook group too much without actually practicing speaking in live situation because as we know as stutterers we can record ourselves we can record a video on our phone post it to a facebook group <clears throat> excuse me but we know that that speaking experience for us weren't as much of a challenge as if it's live like we are now yeah like a conversation. i don't know about a lot yeah. of people yeah because yeah. with me when i'm speaking and practicing speaking the initial sentence is not usually the issue it's once the conversation begins to build that's when I find myself having to work on it and focus more and concentrate and that's when I begin to enjoy it because that's when I'm learning that's when I'm practicing that's when I'm beginning to implement things or work on different things but even if you're not working on anything the next level of the conversation is always the challenge and to get through that that's a small win yeah that's wicked it's really good just to add i sometimes feel that if i haven't kind of spoken to anyone in that day or or speaking to people like just for a short while i do feel a difference in my speech even though my top top level can be good and um, consistent as well, I still feel dropped purely because I'm speaking to less people. And and yeah. in in the end, it's a bit like when we're talking about the footballers; they might they might be expected to come back and play two three games a week straight away for a month, and they're getting yeah. off the boil because they've just been messing about at home with toilet paper kick, kicking that about instead of uh, yeah. kicking ball around yeah so, yeah so I yeah because they're not match fit yeah and i definitely think that 
the kind of a facility for for people who started to connect with people now uh, a bit more easily via video call would be really really beneficial and and um, start holding back is looking to provide that during this self isolation period and um, I really really would encourage ev everyone to join because <clears throat> there will be some benefit to it and I do guarantee that you're gonna have times in your day when you you aren't doing anything you aren't speaking to anyone you run out of yeah. to watch on YouTube you run out of memes yeah. to watch and literally yeah. you just need to click on a link you've seen everything on Netflix <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing else to watch on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about Netflix, actually, that they are um, <clears throat> they're going to slow down their servers or something because too many people are on the their network now at the same time, and they're screwing up their servers. So, so they're going to have problems. So that's even more reason why I should connect with. They stop holding back a video chat facility. And um, and I guess um, <clears throat> challenge yourself in this ch challenging time, challenging yeah. time because yeah, it, it it's a bit rubbish, but it's an opportunity as well to um, to build up a different set of skills that maybe will be more important in the future. And speaking through video conferencing video conferencing or if you are in a web-based meeting at work and and in the past I, I've even even had interviews over Skype mm. they're completely yeah. different to where when you're in a room with someone so um, yeah. building these types of skills if you can do that now then actually gaining from something that has been forced upon you so um yeah, let's make it happen, Chris. Let's make it happen. Yeah, and I think it's important to to outline and make it very clear that this is not an opportunity for anyone to drum whatever technique they're working on down at other people's throats. Nah. Not, this is not an opportunity for them to full stat on other people. It's just an opportunity for people to practice speaking, regardless of however they want to speak. Everyone is able to speak however they want to speak. It's just a platform for people to jump on and have a conversation with another person that has a stutter, whoever they may be, whatever they're working on. That's all the aim of it is. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah. to achieve. That's actually one thing that really, really annoys me because it's so easy to, to get on the high horse and just talk about some technique or tell people to stop technique or just say all these things. Yeah. And, and when I see this happening, I'll, I'll check back to actually see if they've actually asked that person questions about who they are or what's happening. And cause yeah. first of all, you need to understand the person before you can actually assist them but people are too fixed on pushing their own agenda forward yeah. and and i guess um whether it's pro technique or anti-technique first understand what the person wants to speak for which situation they're struggling in and what their intentions and their motivations are first and then you can actually yeah. help and if you, if you really want to help if someone really wants to improve their communication skills to get a job, then telling them to, to stay away from certain programs when they could help them is, that's not going to help them. <clears throat> or in the other sense, if they've experienced these programs already, but it didn't help them, then pushing different programs onto them, that's not going to help them either. So first, yeah. you understand the person, but <clears throat> hopefully this doesn't work out like that, and we'll no. just get a healthy co community of people just having a chat and and trying to, I guess, brighten brighten each other's lives in this uh, yeah 
in this testing period. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I don't see, like you said, very easy for people to start saying, no, you should do this, you should try this, you should do that, you should try this. But I just find it very difficult when you've literally met someone for the first time and you're telling them about a technique that is taking you six months to master and you're asking them to do it in two minutes when you first met them. It's just like, no, that's definitely not the right way to go about it. Yeah. So, yeah, this isn't about that. It's just about allowing people the opportunity to just have a chat with other people. Everyone's probably going to be at home, sitting there. Okay, they might be working from home. Are they working from home at that time? The time difference might mean that one person's off work now and the other person's at work but hasn't really got that much more work to do so they can jump on. So, yeah, it's just an opportunity for people to get on and have a chat. So, yeah, we're looking to implement this pretty much ASAP. We've got AO working on it behind the scenes, getting the tech side <laughs> of that sorted. I hope he's working on that, but... <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so yeah. Well this conversation will be pointless. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's nah, Jake he's excited. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. Alright, Chris, I'm I'm gonna end the uh, recording now. But it is it's been good seeing your face, man. It's been, good, been good seeing your face. Is um when when you first told me that you were showing symptoms of flu and and stuff and I, I, and I was thinking the worst that I, I had a vision of you in bed with an I, I, IV drip next to you <coughs> beard growing oh, out bed. <coughs> beard you growing know what? out that's mad <laughs> that you're saying that because today I actually had a shave today oh. I had a shave so my beard was growing out I was in bed it. but no IV drip you should have kept it you shouldn't have filmed your hair as well like, come on who's going to take you seriously <laughs> We're waiting for yourself It's all good. All right, thank you for your time, Chris, man. It's been good. Nothing, bro. Good to see you, Ruben. Cool. Nothing, man. Take it easy, bro. Bye. Right. Cool, man. Bye.